How's it going, guys? It is 2.35 a.m. Wednesday, May 11th here in Japan, and we've got this difficult pathology slash internal medicine question. If you have disagreements with what you read here, you think this is weird, you think these answer choices are too similar, uh, take up your disagreements with NBME 9 for 2CK, all right? Nearly identical question with similar answer choices. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now let's start the clip. 30-year-old woman. She has a one-day history of diffuse muscle and bone pain, vomiting, rash, and fever. She's febrile at 102 Fahrenheit, heart rate 105, respiratory rate 18, blood pressure 80 and 55. Physical exam shows a diffuse maculopapular rash involving the face, trunk, hands, and feet. There's one plus bilateral peripheral edema. She works as a horticulturalist, which means with plants. Which of the following is most likely explanation for these findings? Let's just walk through the answer choices here. Choice A, arsenic poisoning, wrong fucking answer. I've only seen this once as a correct answer on a 2CK clinical mastery series assessment. You need to know arsenic is in fertilizer. Okay, increased risk. Yes, in horticulturalists, gardeners. Uh, small amounts of arsenic and fertilizer causes plants to flourish, uh, but uh, poisoning can cause a rash of the palms and soles, hands and feet. It can. And it can also, in the 2CK question, they show you mees lines. M-E-E-S lines, which are white lines on the nails, okay? They show you a picture of the hands, arsenic poisoning in a gardener in that question. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, wrong answer, okay? Now, whilst this does cause a palms and soles rash, okay? It's not the answer on the NBME, not my fucking opinion, all right? I mean, presumably, doesn't classically cause low blood pressure, doesn't classically cause peripheral edema, Okay. I mean, they don't say anything about a tick bite or going hiking recently. Uh, Derma Center wood, wood tick transmits it despite the name, usually the Eastern United States. Okay. Um, and you treat with doxycycline. All right. Wrong fucking answer. And this is Rocky Mountain spotted fever being a uh, rickettsi rickettsi, by the way. Secondary syphilis, wrong answer, treponema pallidum. So, uh, yes, this would involve the palms and soles classically, all right? And you've got a, a younger woman, a younger patient, uh, sexually active, presumably. Uh, I've seen actually old patients uh, with syphilis, but patient fits the demographic. They might have given you a history of a canker, okay, painless uh, genital sore. Patients with secondary syphilis can get a body rash, condylomata lata, which are painless uh, plaques in the genitals as well. And Palms and souls rash, okay, but it's not what they want on NBME. Once again, it's not my opinion. Choice D, toxic shock syndrome is the correct answer, okay? So they don't mention anything about tampons. They don't say anything about cotton packing. They can tell you kid was in a car accident, a 16-year-old car accident, had a, a nose bleeding and had cotton packing and got... Uh, shock. That's toxic shock syndrome as well. They don't give you any of that in the vignette here, which makes this hard. They do give you low blood pressure. Yes. Okay. And uh, toxic shock syndrome can cause desquamation of the palms and soles. It's not classically a rash, quote unquote. It's more desquamation, but it's not my fucking opinion. It's the answer on the NBME exam. Okay. Uh, they usually aren't so audacious where they're going to give you four fucking answer choices with that could be palms and souls, but it's what NBME did and they want toxic shock syndrome. Okay. Obviously staph aureus, TSST toxin. If you're studying for step one, you should know it's a super antigen bridges MHC2 uh, to T cell receptor causes the macrophage to release cytokines. Okay. Really high yield. Uh, don't confuse uh, that super antigen TSST toxin with endotoxin, which will bind to CD14 on macrophages, aka toll-like receptor 4, TLR4, which causes the macrophage to release cytokines. TNF-alpha being increased vascular permeability, vasodilatation, low blood pressure, interleukin-1 being fever. Should I see water asterisk syndrome? Wrong fucking answer. This is meningococcal septicemia, okay, causing bilateral hemorrhagic necrosis of the adrenal glands, leading to a precipitous drop in blood pressure. And uh, after you give IV saline, you need to give hydrocortisone to replenish the cortisol to maintain blood pressure, okay? That's a long fucking discussion. And I've made other audio cubic questions on this, all right? But meningococcal septicemia causing uh, low blood pressure, okay? Non blanching rash in those patients oftentimes. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content if you like my stuff. Subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.